Good day everyone. My name is Kanak and I am an application engineer at NetSim. Today I will be focusing on simulation of network attacks and detection in Manet using NetSim. In this webinar I will explain various features of NetSim for researchers to analyze networks and also write their own algorithms. So, in this webinar, we will start with an introduction to NetSim. Next, we will demonstrate how to design a Manet network scenario, analyze the metrics and edit the network protocol codes to implement sinkhole attack and IDS, that is intrusion detection system. In the end, we will provide an understanding of various areas of research in Manet and leave a QA session to answer any questions. I request everyone to ask their queries at the end of the demonstration. We are currently muting all participants and you may write your queries in the chat box. What is the need for a network simulator? With the advancement of technology, new protocols are being drafted very frequently and it is increasingly difficult to keep ourselves updated. Moreover, analyzing network behavior using traditional analytical methods is almost impossible. Hence, network simulators are used to provide an accurate understanding of network behavior and possible problems and solutions. So, these are some of the trends observed in computer networking domain and present in-demand areas of research include LTE that is long-term evolution, WSN wireless sensor networks, IoT that is Internet of Things and CR that is cognitive radio. All these technologies are covered in NetSim. In addition, almost 50% of all research papers refer a network simulator. NetSim is a leading simulation software for network research and development and defense with over 300 customers across 15 countries. NetSim covers a wide range of technologies including the latest in sensor networks, Manets, cognitive radio, LTE and Internet of Things. NetSim comes with C source code of network protocols. Users can edit this and write their own algorithms. NetSim professional version caters to the needs of industry and defense. The standard version is used by R&D labs for new protocol development and over 100 papers have been published using NetSim. NetSim also has an academic version to be used in network labs, advanced network labs, mobile communication lab, etc. of UG or PG programs in electronics, computer science and more. NetSim is available as 9 components or toolboxes as shown. Component 1 is the base component and the other components are add-on. In this webinar, we will be focusing on component 4 which has Manet protocols. NetSim V9 is the latest release and features Internet of Things IoT, rate adaptation in WLAN, military radios in HF, UHF and VHF bands and 802.11 AC or Gigabit Wi-Fi. Presently, in NetSim V9, users can also interface MATLAB software with NetSim, while Wireshark interfacing has been improved to include the latest version of Wireshark. Development has also been done on NetSim emulator, where users can connect NetSim with real devices running live application. NetSim emulator is a separate add-on. Now, coming to the theme of this webinar, Manets, due to the inherent design defects, are vulnerable to security threats. 
Some examples include snooping attacks, wormhole attacks, black hole attacks, routing table overflow and poisoning attacks, packet replication, denial of service DOS attacks, distributed DOS attacks, etc. One such severe network attack in MANET is the sinkhole attack. In this type of attack, a malicious node gains access to the whole network traffic by advertising false routing information. To repeat, this threat involves a malicious node collecting all network traffic by advertising false routing information. The attacker can then modify the packet information or simply drop them to make the network complicated. Protocols like DSR get seriously affected by this type of attack. We will now see how to implement sinkhole attack in DSR protocol of NetSense. During DSR root discovery, RREQ, that is root request packets are broadcasted by the source and the destination replies with the RREP, that is root reply packet, which contains the root. But in DSR, root reply can be sent even by the intermediate nodes if they have a root to the destination in their root cache. This is used as a loophole to implement sinkhole attack. The malicious node on receiving a root request packet adds a fake root entry into its root cache with the destination as its next hop and sends a fake RREP packet with a fake root. The source observes this as a better route and hence all the network traffic is sent to the sinkhole or the malicious node. In NetSim, sinkhole attack is implemented in such a way that the malicious node drops the packets received. However, users can modify this suitably if required. We include a malicious .c file to the existing DSR project in order to implement sinkhole attack. Now I will open the NetSim source C code. As you can see, a malicious .c file is added in the DSR project to introduce malicious behavior. The function fn netsim dsr malicious node is used in two cases to identify whether the current device is malicious. One is on receiving a data packet to drop the packet if the device is malicious. And two is on receiving a RREQ packet to add a fake root entry into the root cache. The function fn netsim dsr malicious root add to cache is used to add a fake root entry into the root cache in case the current device is found to be malicious. The function fn netsim dsr malicious process source root option is invoked whenever a data packet is received and the current device is found to be malicious. This is used to drop the packet instead of forwarding it to the next hop. Now let us design a network in MANET to implement sinkhole attack. I will now open a scenario that I have already created. As you can see, device 2 is malicious in this current scenario that I have created. Now I will rebuild the modified DSR codes to obtain, to obtain libdsr.dll. DLLs are dynamic libraries that are loaded at runtime. This is the code that had the malicious.c file added to the DSR project. 
Similarly, users can implement their algorithms and build and link the same to NetSim. This DLL is replaced in the folder where NetSim binaries are present. I am renaming the original DLL before replacing the modified DLL. This is done in order to implement sinkhole attack. I have gone through the steps of building quickly and a detailed video on how to write your own code in NetSim is available in our website for interested participants. I am running the scenario. We complete the simulation and Viewing on packet animation, we can clearly see that malicious node sends root reply on receiving the root request. By doing so, it attracts network traffic. It is also clearly visible that the malicious node is not forwarding the packet to the destination. You can also note that the throughput is zero. As you noticed with three additional functions containing about 100 lines of code we have modified NetSim Manet to implement a sinkhole attack. I hope you understand how simple it is to write your own code in NetSim. We have now shown you an attack you, that is sinkhole attack and let us now look at how to program a detection and prevention mechanism. One of the tools for prevention of sinkhole attacks is IDS, Intrusion Detection System. This is used to detect and then to deflect attacks or unauthorized use of systems, networks and related resources. In our case, IDS is implemented to identify intruders performing sinkhole attack and prevent them from further attacks in future. The IDS that is implemented in NetSim consists of two components, the watchdog algorithm and the path rater algorithm. Watchdog. Each device has a watchdog timer. Watchdog timer is added to see if the packets sent are in turn being forwarded by the next hop device within a specific time which is the watchdog time duration. As we have already seen a malicious intruder in our sinkhole implementation simply drops the packet and does not forward it to the destination. Thus, it leads to timer expiry in the node which sent the packet to the malicious node. A counter is used to keep track of number of times the watchdog timer expires. If the counter reaches the failure threshold which is 20 in our case, the next hop is marked as malicious and its IP is blacklisted. Path Rater Whenever watchdog identifies a device as malicious, path rater adds its IP to the blacklist of the current device. That is, if the watchdog running in device ID 1 identifies device 3 as malicious, then the IP address of device ID 3 is added to the blacklist of device ID 1. In addition to this, the path rater validates routes by verifying the root reply packets. The root reply is discarded if it contains the blacklisted IP. To implement IDS in NetSim, we use two files, pathrater.c and watchdog.c. Now I will open NetSim C source code. 